Peeps, welcome to another vlog. Today's gonna be a little bit of a big one. We got a pretty big job ahead of us. 7.40 in the morning, we already ate breakfast and we are ready to go, so let's do this. So, quick little digression, peeps. I do wanna do another Q&A, hopefully in the next video, so do me a favor, as you're watching this, go down in the comments below. Let me know any questions that you want me to answer so that we can do a pretty awesome Q&A together. Let's go. So, peeps, we have eight toilets to install today, and I know, I know, Kenny Molotov, why do you guys keep doing toilets, peeps? I know it's raining toilets up here on this channel, but if that's what the customer wants, that's what the customer gets. Oh, and by the way, peeps, you know what to do, baby. Let's do eight toilets. Let's go. <laughs> All right, peeps, so we're just about to head out, but I had to go into the truck to grab a bunch of tools that we're gonna need because we're doing so many toilets that Dad and I need to sort of separate the job and separate the tools to make it as fast and efficient as possible. So let me just show you quickly what I typically use just to install toilets. So as I told you in the other vlogs, pliers and screwdrivers are just a must. They are probably some of the most used tools in your repertoire. It's just important to have them in your pocket constantly. Another big one when it comes to toilets are scrapers. Essentially, if you're gonna run into a wax gasket, you're gonna need to clean the flange. So this thing right here will allow you to get down and under it, be able to pull it out and then scrape off the rest of the wax that's already in there. A nice little ratchet is always important. I don't always use this. It's really important to be able to get a good feel off of how tight the nuts are. So it is more important for me to tighten things by hand because I got a better feel with it than you do with a ratchet. That's the one thing you gotta worry about. It is really easy to over tighten with these things and when you're dealing with porcelain those things crack all the time so just be extra careful when working with one of these if you need it last but not least good old silicone gun we typically silicone the base of the toilet because it does provide a sturdy base at the bottom so it's something to keep in mind something to use if you need it we are officially ready to go let's do a toilet <laughs> Don't judge me, peeps. been asked this in the past by a couple of you peeps so I want to clarify it right now the weapon of choice when sealing a toilet is none other than the rubber gasket so peeps there are two types of gaskets on the market that we know about one is a rubber gasket which is this one right here and the other one is a wax gasket now some plumbers swear by both of them so I don't want to say anything bad about either of the products but one thing dad and I have noticed is that wax gaskets are a little bit more sensitive and don't hold their shape as well so if if you have a wobbly toilet what will happen is over time the wobble will compress the sides of the gasket and before you know it unfortunately it'll deteriorate the seal will be broken we have found in our history in our past with our data that for the most part every time we've installed rubber gaskets they tend to have a really good life expectancy there are some advantages to wax gaskets though sometimes a wax gasket is going to get the job done when a rubber one is not and what I mean is sometimes you have a toilet flange that is too high or too low I've seen some plumbers or some general contractors actually stack wax gasket on wax 
base gasket, which isn't um, great policy. Typically, you want to build up the flange instead of using double wax gaskets, but that's something I've seen in the past. But also, in a situation where the flange is really high and you can't actually repair the flange and a half inch gasket's too thick, then wax will be the best thing there in that situation as well because you can compress it way more than you can compress one of these gaskets. So that's just something to keep in mind. Those are the advantages to wax gaskets and the advantages to the rubber gasket that we typically use. But let me know down in the comments below. Do you swear by wax or do you swear by rubber or do you not care, peeps? <laughs> in the truck right now I'm about to grab some lunch but something that I want to say for those of you using rubber gaskets the thing you got to watch out for with rubber gaskets is you got to make sure that when you're putting the toilet down that you feel the compression taking place that's one difference between putting down wax and putting down rubber the difference is is when you put down wax you're trying to put it down one shot for good so that when the compression takes place it stays there and then you have a solid seal with rubber you actually have the ability to 
verify if there is in fact compression taking place. So you're gonna have to get the hang of understanding the weight of the toilets and also the feeling of what rubber feels like when it finally does compress. There have been countless times in the past where I've put a toilet down and I haven't felt anything so I had to switch out the gasket. But when I was first starting out I didn't have that knowledge. I didn't know what compression actually felt like. I also was getting used to picking up toilets themselves so that was a whole hurdle in itself. So over time as you do this more and more often you're gonna find that when you throw a gasket down and then you put a toilet on top right away you're gonna know if it in fact compressed if it was a rubber gasket or if you didn't feel anything at all and that's just something that takes time and effort to eventually get but you're gonna get it soon.